Okay, thank you. And Jeff, we're ready. So welcome everybody. Sorry, we're two and a half minutes behind. We had a little bit of a tech glitch and we're mindful and sensitive to your valuable time. I'm Jeff Gebbin with American Purpose. It, it seemed to me that Poland is much in the news, but not much in the way of deep dive. It is a terribly important country in supporting the Alliance and Ukraine in its defense against Russian invasion. You know all that. And I thought it would be useful, 45 minutes, we have a hard stop, 1245 Eastern, to have a conversation with someone who is in Warsaw, who knows a lot about the politics, the refugee situation, civil society, we'll speak to economy too, just for um, a briefing through a good conversation. Uh, we have Pietro with us. I'm not gonna formally introduce him because I've written to you all about him. He's been involved in civil society projects. He's, uh, I think, a leading expert in public diplomacy. He's been in government. He's been an advisor to a Polish deputy prime minister. He joined the Warsaw Stock Exchange this summer, actually June, 2022. And you're gonna find him a lovely and interesting conversation partner. Welcome to you, Piotr, and thank you for making the time. And then we invited Ivana Stradner, our friend and colleague from American Enterprise Institute to run, to manage the conversation. They'll chat the first 15 or 20 minutes and then open to you in the gallery. Uh, Ivana is a researcher and academic, uh, a distinguished one. She's been uh, with UC Berkeley. She's been at Harvard. She's a Jean Kirkpatrick Research Fellow at AEI. She writes for a range of publications. She hails originally from Serbia, and she has been a staunch supporter of Ukraine. So to everybody, and you too, welcome. And Ivana, with that, I'm going to give you the floor. Take it away. Thank you very much, Jeff, and thank you very much, Piotr, for joining us today um, to talk about, uh, in my view, right now, one of the most pressing issues about, you know, the sixth war as we are approaching. I would like to also speak with you about economy and refugees, so many, so many topics. So let me start uh, with this question. So right now, we have just approached the sixth a month of uh, the war uh, in Ukraine since 2022, even though the war basically started in 2014. And, uh, uh, different nations within the EU uh, have approached this war very um, like a differently. Uh, for example, Germany and France, um, they have not taken particularly the lead uh, when it comes to security matters, unlike, for example, the United Kingdom or the Baltic states or Poland itself, because uh, Poland is the largest donor of military aid to Ukraine, just behind the US and UK. Uh, Polish government uh, is a home to more than 2 million Ukrainian refugees. Um, I read also that uh, Poland's government and private citizen combined uh, actually uh, will spend almost 1% of its GDP to aid Ukrainian refugees. So many great things that uh, Poland uh, has done so far. So if you can just maybe uh, start uh, this conversation by telling us um, how has Poland approached this uh, war and what are great things that Poland has done, what, what, what Poland can do better in the future. So once again, thank you very much for joining us today and uh, speaking with us about this uh, important topic. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction and for inviting me. I'm very humbled. Um, I, 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 I would like to start with a very important data from a recent public opinion survey uh, as an indicator of moods in Poland. 75% um, of Poles consider the war a threat to Poland's security. Yet, uh, six, sixty percent of uh, of the uh, of Polish citizens is of opinion that Ukraine should continue its resistance without any concessions or compromises, and only twenty three polls of polls think that 
the, the, the priori prioritized peace over uh, potential territorial losses from Ukraine. So I think this is very telling. It, uh, as far as I'm concerned, I, I, I would call it a high level of understanding um, and awareness what we are all facing in the region because we are as a nation as a society we are afraid uh, but still we support ukraine 60 percent that's a lot um, so in my view polish support for ukraine is balanced and stable um, we polish Polish society, but also Polish government, Polish uh, the leaders of the public opinion seem to understand the gravity of the situation. Uh, you mentioned our uh, military aid, you mentioned uh, uh, efforts, big efforts from our civil society. This is this is true. Uh, we 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 have been we have been advocating ukraine's efforts uh, to become a part of the west since the very beginning of uh, ukrainian independence in 1991 uh, so polish polish society polish government polish political um, elites understand that um, this is part of our reason of uh, state the raison d'etat uh this is something that this is about us it's not about it's not only about ukraine this is also about us and i'm glad that our society uh understands it understand it and um we what's also worth mentioning we we were supporting ukraine even before the aggression because uh in 2021 when Poland reportedly received intel from the USA partners, American partners, and uh, about the possible war, uh, we started so-called diplomatic offensive to to warn, to to educate uh, educate our partners from the EU about the two uh, main dangers. One one of those dangers were Belarusian hybrid aggression against Poland and Lithuania. Mm -hmm. And the second one was growing certainty that uh, Russia is preparing to invade Ukraine. Uh, so uh, what, what could we do better? I think that we are all very aware that we, uh, we still have to, um, I don't want to use the word to educate, but to, to we, we should keep, uh, telling our Western partners about the real nature of the Russian state. We, we have wonderful partners here because it's not, we are talking about Poland now, but this is also the Baltic states. The, the whole Eastern flank of the NATO is very, very engaged in this process. Um, and I think this is thanks to the Eastern flank of the NATO, thanks to Poland, thanks to Lithuania, Estonia, thanks to Ukrainian um, victory in the Ukrainian uh, strategic narratives uh, that, for example, Germany uh, t changed its rhetoric uh, in, uh, at the very beginning of the war. They, they changed their rhetoric. I don't know to what extent they changed their intentions because uh, we, I think that we all root for Ukraine and we all in the EU understand that this is, uh, this aggression is, is something morally wrong, but maybe not, it's, I, I think that we may differ in the, uh, how we imagine the, the, the ultimate the ultimate goal of our action because uh, defeating Russia is something different than stopping the war at any price and I think that this is where the opinions might differ between the EU country states. Uh, I would also, if I can, I don't I don't control the 
blog, so please uh, interrupt me anytime you think that uh, that I'm talking too long. Too long. Um, uh, in Poland, we have. It's important that we don't have. Uh, as I said, political political scene is very polarized, but both mm -hmm. uh, sides of the political uh, political idol uh, support Ukraine. They may differ in details, but they support Ukraine. We actually we don't have active pro-Russian political groups uh, uh, or uh, pol the, no politicians with op openly pro-Russian. Uh, agenda. This is very important. And in Poland, we have, I would say, empirically grounded uh, distrust for Russia. So in our society, we, we, we are very aware. I, I think uh, we are kind of, um, we, 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 we monitor closely Russian propaganda, the think tank, civil society organization, think organizations, think tanks, uh, but also government agencies. So uh, even if someone would have some pro-Russian uh, um, opinions in Poland, uh, for, for sure. Uh, it won't work. Yeah, and that those, easily. Such, mm -hmm. those people should uh, choose their words correctly, uh, carefully because because uh, I, I, other, otherwise the, the, the Polish street uh, or Twitter would call them uh, Ruska Onuta, which means Ruski, uh, Ruski foot wrap, which is, which is a popular name for those who are supposed to be the amplifiers of Russian propaganda. I've actually read uh, numerous Russian propaganda in um, in Poland, especially related to refugees, uh, that Ukrainian refugees are taking the jobs away from Poland, um, uh, numerous things related to uh, hospital spaces, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So I have no doubt, you know, I mean, I'm absolutely not surprised that you're seeing that such propaganda does not work there because uh, apparently, people who experienced uh, Russia in the past, mm -hmm. uh, they know uh, what we are actually dealing with when it comes to the Kremlin. And this is, I think, one of the greatest differences between Eastern flank of, of NATO and the rest of Western Europe, because they, um, they haven't experienced like a, a true uh, Russian um, aggression. But speaking of refugees, like as I mentioned, Poland um, has accepted more refugees than any other European countries. There are more than 2 million people there. Um, I read even that there is a law granting Ukrainian citizens and spouses equal access to Polish labor market, healthcare, right, education, and all other social uh, benefits, which is uh, great. And I think you really answered my question related to uh, Russian propaganda stemming from uh, uh, from the refugees. But I would like to also ask you, um, how many of those refugees actually uh, went back home, um, uh, back to Russia, especially what are your predictions for this, uh, for this winter? Uh, what are the next steps when it comes to refugees uh, and Poland? Well, obviously the, the most visible effect of war in Poland are Ukrainian refugees. Um, according to the border guard sources, 5.9 million people have crossed the Polish border from Ukraine since day one of the Russian invasion. Uh, 4 million returned, uh, some moved to another country, some went back to Ukraine. Right now, as of today, we have uh, we have 1.3 million of Ukrainian refugees in Poland, uh, but I'm talking about the refugees because the total number of Ukrainian citizens in Poland, uh, that would be about 2.8 million. This is because approximately 1.5 million of Ukrainians have lived in Poland before the war. But... Uh, as for the refugees, there are 1.3 million in Poland right now. Very important uh, information is that 93% of them are women and children, only 7% are men. 
uh, as you said, uh, the government has approved a bill to legalize their status in Poland. Uh, so they have access to public services, uh, including healthcare and schools. Uh, many other small benefits, like for example, from the from February to if I'm not mistaken, to, to August, they had uh, free train tickets. Uh, they needed only a passport to, to travel by train. So they have work permits, uh, access to the healthcare system. Uh, as a, uh, yeah, and uh, so as for the social cohesion, in my opinion, Ukrainians integrate quite well. Uh, many of them are uh, guests in private houses, uh, mm -hmm. private homes by Polish, by Polish, they, they, they are hosted as guests by Polish people. Uh, there are no refugee camps as such in Poland. We do have some reception, transit, assistance centers, this is, uh, this is obvious. Uh, for example, the one at the Warsaw East Railway, railway Station, which is by, uh, by the way, led by one of our outstanding humanitarian NGOs, uh, Polish Center for International Aid, PCPM. Um, and uh, I think that very important information also is that we have Ukrainian children in Polish schools. This is, mm -hmm. this is, this is really a challenge. Um, the, first, the, the first half of the year was quite, uh, it, 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 I, do, I would say it was a trial, but right now, uh, Polish Ministry of Education estimates that about 400,000 uh, young Ukrainians may want to attend Polish schools from the September, uh, mostly elementary wow. and high schools. Of course, local self-governments appeal to the government for more resources and money because the teachers, we, we don't have Ukrainian um, speaking teachers or at least enough of them. Uh, so these are real challenges, but we, this, this, this may seem very complicated, but at the same time, I, I have to say that uh, of course, probably there are some minor incidents, but the situation in general is very, I would say, calm. Uh, you can hear, Ukrainians are very visible, especially in major towns. You, you can hear Ukrainian or Russian language because some of them are Russian speaking. Uh, you see many cars with Ukrainian license plates, uh, Poland responds that there are uh, bilingual commercials, bilingual, bilingual information in mass transit. We see street fundraisers with cans, Ukrainian flags in the windows, also sometimes on public buildings. But I haven't heard about any ethnicity-based conflicts. Um, so, and of course, I don't want to picture an idyllic situation because, of course, this is an extraordinary uh, situation. Those people are displaced against their will. Uh, they, 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 they don't know the language despite the similarities between Polish and Ukrainian. Um, they need medical help, often psychological help. So in, it's a tragedy, but uh, I think that it could have been much worse. And uh, uh, we are doing uh, our best to, 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 to help those people. It's uh, one important uh, data. It's worth noticing that 65% of the refugees, uh, that is 420,000, uh, have jobs. This is very important. Mm -hmm. they, are, they are working here in Poland. But uh, they speaking have of, permits. Mm -hmm. So exactly like speaking of jobs and everything. So um, everyone is concerned about this winter and um, things related to economic crisis, inflation, recession, and how things might actually unfold, especially with um, with with the gas crisis in Europe. So if you can also help us understand. How is Poland dealing with all these challenges and how do you foresee uh, this upcoming winter 
um, mm -hmm. will look like. Uh, so, because after this, I would like to also open the floor uh, for other people to ask questions, but I think it would be a very good idea, like maybe just to set a scene and to help us understand what's going on in terms of economy um, in, in Poland. Um, yeah. I'm not an economic expert, which may be misleading given the name of my current employer, the Warsaw Stock Exchange, but uh, don't worry, I, I'm, I'm financially literate and I've done my homework. So uh, as for the unemployment rate in Poland, right now, um, Poland has one of the, uh, in, in, the unemployment rate in Poland is one of the uh, uh, of the uh, it's it's two or it it has to be three percent so it's one of the lowest in the European Union right now the unemployment rate for June was two point seven. Uh, compared to average rate 6% in the whole European Union, the average rate in the European Union. Uh, the inflation rate is uh, worse. Uh, in July, it was 15.6. Uh, and this is the highest, uh, the highest inflation rate since 1997. Um, Polish cabinet had adopted, has adopted a deal uh, with so-called prolonged um, introducing so-called anti-inflation shields. Uh, this contains lowered taxes, lowered excise, excise tax on electricity, reduced VAT on staple food, uh, fertilizers, and so-called mortgage holidays uh, for people who have mortgages uh, for as many as eight installments. Um, we, the, the winter, as you said, the winter is coming and uh, we, we don't have a crystal ball. We, I, I think that in, we, this, is, this is really important. Uh, the, the energy supplies will be yes. very important. Yes, exactly. So Poland, well, Poland, Polish gas stores are 99% full which according to estimate to, to some uh, experts should be, to official sources, should be enough for two months. Also, basically a few days ago, we, we, we opened, we have opened a gas interconnector with Slovakia. Uh, mm -hmm. This is very important in terms of gas solidarity because Slovakia is one of the most heavily dependent on Russian gas countries. Uh, we have our LNG gas terminal in, uh, at the uh, Baltic Sea. Also, we are opening in September, we are opening the Baltic pipe. So the gas, uh, it, it, it all, it's going to depend on the winter uh, because, of the, you know, the the, the voters, uh, the, 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 the voters uh, will, for example, for sure, they, they will be more angry uh, if they uh, will have to pay a lot for, for energy. This is, right now, this, this crisis, if we can call it a crisis uh, it's it's not about losing jobs losing savings of, of your life it's more about I can't afford uh, things I I could have afford I, I, I could have afford um, like one week or uh, one month ago so this is about uh, so this is about that uh, people are working people have jobs but they they have less money uh, so we expect drop in consumer spending that's for sure we we we, ex we expect a uh, drop in investments uh, but uh, our officials from the national bank of poland uh, they are they say that we ex we are not expecting a recession in poland we Good. a, a technique technical recession, so-called mm. technical recession will be possible, 
GDP may have negative growth for two quarters, but this is more a slowdown. Uh, so, but of course, uh, we cannot uh, foresee the future. There. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. So, but uh, what what I'm afraid of uh, in the context of the whole European Union is that uh, the, the West will not want to freeze uh, for a bunch of countries in the Central Eastern Europe. So, um, and knowing that Russia has a long record of record of negotiating in bad faith and weaponizing energy supplies, I'm I'm thinking that if some kind of peace talks offer would be on the table on Russian terms, then uh, I'm afraid that some countries of the old union would be keen to fall for that. I hope I hope this is only my fear. And um, so we we are preparing for for the winter we are preparing for sharing our uh, gas resources with our uh, neighbors and uh, and yeah we will see about it but this this is it's going to be a crucial factor i think this winter and i think that this is very important in terms of the whole world if we make it through the winter uh, then it, it, it's going to be a very serious test for our uh, solidarity because the pre pressure from the voters in the all, all in all countries of the EU uh, will be will be serious. I think. Unfortunately, I share a very very similar uh, uh, sentiment with you. So. Uh, I hope both of us are uh, wrong on this front, but I would like to open the floor for questions and I see that several people actually, uh, Peter Scary uh, wants to ask a question, so please um, go ahead. I will mute myself. Thank you, Ivana, uh, and um, thank you, uh, Mr. Kriegel. Um, uh, appreciate um, your presentation and 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 your your participation and involvement in these critical issues, but um and and my my question is extremely sympathetic. I'm I'm concerned you'll be you'll misunderstand my expressed skepticism of what you're saying about the situation of refugees in Poland. Um, I'm just dubious that things are working out as smoothly as you seem to indicate. Um, the, it, 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 or if, if, if things are as smooth as you indicate, how sustainable are they? Um, I'm just, uh, I'm a student of migration issues and I would assume that there have to be conflicts um, over, um, over residential patterns, uh, I, I, I'm not sure you mentioned how many, what percentage of the Ukrainian refugees refugees live in private homes. Uh, I, I would wonder how sustainable that is over time. Um, I would assume that there are strains on all sorts of institutions and social services. Um, I don't know as much about Eastern Europe as I'd like, but I would assume there might well be tensions between Eastern Orthodox Ukrainians and Roman Catholics of, in Poland. Um, I would just think there are a range of tensions and sources of tension and conflict that um, you haven't, I won't say you've ignored them, but I haven't heard much about them. And, and what I hear is that things are going okay. And I'm just finding myself dubious. Um, again, I'm not, I'm, I'm sympathetic to the problems of the Ukrainians and to what, and appreciate Pol, Poland's efforts, but I'm just wondering how sustainable they are given what you see on the ground and what you've reported thus far. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So um, well, I, 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 I'm, I'm not saying that everything is uh, great because, as I said, this is uh, this is a tragedy. This is a, an ex extraordinary situation. 
Uh, and we were afraid of many possible possible threats, but uh, we as a, as experts, as Polish society, as Polish politicians, but um, I, I'm not aware of any of any conflicts. Uh, of course, we uh, there's a question of uh, statistics that there is one. There's 1.3 million people in Poland, so I'm sure at, they 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 fight. They there is there, there is some criminal activity. That's for sure. But uh, this is not um, this is not visible on the streets. This is not something you 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 see on on a daily basis. Um, I live in a small uh, neighborhood. Uh, in Warsaw, uh, there's the, the Ukrainian refugees are here too. Uh, we some of them attend our church, the Roman Catholic Church, even though they are Greek uh, Orthodox uh, Catholics. Um, I just this is I I, I would say that uh, there are. I I don't know everything, so maybe mm. there are there are situations uh, that uh, you are uh, that you mentioned, but like the, this is not something we uh, we see every day. I I, I would say I would uh, say that given the circumstances, the situation is really good. I don't know. Another question is: is it? is it sustainable over time it's a very good question because we can't we can't have those people for another year or two years in our homes because mainly because it's not about the intentions it's just about money yeah but as i said uh, in the first part of my uh, in the first par part of this conversation uh, i think that poles are surprisingly aware of the situation they are aware that this is an extraordinary situation. It's not perfect. We may be, we are not happy about those uh, people because um, this is it, it's a trouble. But still, as as I said, uh, majority of polls, uh, 50, 53 percent of polls uh, is supporting Ukraines in some way. Uh, so this is uh, it is some kind of uh, a phenomenon that maybe it needs uh, further um, research. I invite you to Poland, uh, <laughs> but uh, I'm I'm not I'm not hiding and and no no that this is I of course there are I I remember one case where uh, but it was a fight of young men and uh, of course there are people who would like to say see there are ukrainians uh, they, they, they here they they feel they 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 act like they are they are the the the, the, the they are act like uh, they are in kiev or or Lvov. but this, it doesn't work. There are, of course, we have groups on Facebook, on Twitter. They're kind of uh, lousy, uh, noisy, but uh, still, the, the, the real, um, the real, uh, the, the range of their activity uh, is the scale is very, very low. So, um, okay, but I hope. I, I, I'm also I, I I understand your question. I, I'm also scared that someday we will this dream or this it's not a dream, but this 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 calm situation will somehow come to an end. But right now it's it's not bad. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you. This is very, very helpful because, as I said, you know, I've been tracking also Russian disinformation in Poland and precisely, you know, what you, what you just mentioned, it's all over the place, but I'm glad that people are not falling for uh, such information operations. Uh, please raise your hand if you have questions, because I don't see anyone else who would like to ask a question. Arch and... Arch Arch who? Arch 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 Arch
Yes, please go ahead. Uh, all right, you hear me? Yes. Great. Um, so I, I would, uh, uh, I'd like our speaker to elaborate uh, on his uh, allusion to uh, uh, pol political polarization uh, that preceded this crisis. And I'd like to know what the Ukraine crisis has, what kind of an effect it has, it's had on the domestic politics of Poland, which were in fact extremely polarized. Um, I worked for an organization, Freedom House, which uh, chronicled Poland as being uh, one of the uh, at-risk democracies uh, around the world. And uh, there was a sense that the law and justice uh, party was taking a page out of uh, Viktor Orban's playbook uh, and trying to uh, capture uh, the press, the judiciary, uh, civil society, other institutions uh, en route to a um, less than a multi-party system. Um, and what has, uh, what has been the effect on this highly polarized domestic politics uh, of the Ukraine crisis? Um, well, first of all, I, 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 I don't think that our democracy is at risk. Uh, and uh, as for the influence, like the direct influence of the Ukrainian, the, the war in Ukraine uh, on Polish politics, well, um, in, uh, in principle, uh, the Law and Justice Party has always been very skeptical, to say the least, about Russia, and uh, especially after the Smolensk crash. Um, in many respects, so the, 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 the war was a moment of bitter satisfaction for those experts in Polish right and center right who spent years trying to warn the West, always, always ending up with a Russophobe, Russophobe's label. Uh, we have the, the parliamentary elections in Poland are set for October 2000, October to, to 2023. Uh, so it is the government that will be setting the tone for at least another year. And I, I find it a, a lucky coincidence for Ukraine. Why? Because uh, the law and justice government proved to be, I don't want to use the word hawkish, but very uh, aware of the, of the threats that come from Russia. And uh, the current opposition, which they support Ukraine too, that, that's for sure. But they, they have a long record of going with the main flow in the EU, which means that uh, they, the, 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 I, we, we, we have to remember that uh, what Poland and Lithuania, the Baltic States, Poland, Czech Republic, Eastern flank of NATO did was to some extent against the will of the grown-ups in the European Union, the, the, the Germans, the French. Uh, so I think that uh, for support of Ukraine, this is important that uh, law and justice will at least one year more at power. Uh, our politics, our political scene is polarized. Uh, both, both, both parties, both camps uh, support Ukraine. This is this is a paradox. Uh, sometimes uh, it's uh, it, it, it's strange, but it's it's a fact. Uh, it's not. I'm kind of worried that we are in a like we are in a permanent cam election campaign mode, which uh, which is not good because. Uh, the emotions, uh, the, the the emotions, and uh, the, the 
the, the politicians uh, d d don't think rationally uh, before the elections. Uh, and this war, it needs, it needs uh, our both, both sides of our political idol to, 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 to think together because, uh, as I said, it's an existential threat to the whole region. You mentioned Orban, uh, Viktor Orban, so you probably know that uh, right now the, the relationships the relationships between Poland and Hungary are somehow cooled down. Uh, it's because of the Orban's, Mr. Orban's uh, attitude towards the, the war. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be a divorce or just some quiet days, but uh, it's visible. We, within the Visegrad group, we cooperate closely with Czech Republic. Uh, the new prime minister, Pet Fiala, uh, is very, um, he, he's very supportive. He, he, he was one of the leaders uh, together with and Andrzej Duda and Janusz Jansa, Prime Minister of Slovenia. They were the three leaders that took a trip to Kyiv. It was the first trip of uh, Western leaders to the Kyiv during the war. Uh, I apologize for interrupting you here, but we have literally less than a minute. So mm -hmm. uh, if you have just a final thought to share with us regarding this, so we can wrap up. Um, I, I think that, uh, this, that according to, to our experts, the, the, the state maintain, maintaining status quo in the war will be playing into the hands of Russia. So I think that, uh, to mount a counter offensive, Ukraine needs more heavy equipment and munitions from the West. So I that's hope very helpful. We will be able to, to, to deliver it because it will depend on political will. And, uh, also it will depend on the question if, if we have those weapons. So I hope that we will be able to deliver, uh, what Ukraine needs to to get. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. I, I agree. And uh, thank you so much for sharing with us also information about uh, the political state in, in Poland, because Poland is definitely a leader when it comes to Ukraine. And I absolutely agree with you that we should definitely pay more attention to what's happening in 2023 and numerous elections uh, in Europe, because the European unity is really, really um, attest at this moment. So I would like to thank you immensely once again for sharing with us your, um, your thoughts. Um, and I want to uh, uh, thank everyone for um, uh, listening to this conversation today. And thank you very much, Jeff, for organizing this. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. Thanks, Ivana. Thanks, Piotr. Thanks, everybody. Have a good day, evening. Thank you.